Hello cameras. Today we will speak about anniversary. We have anniversary of the uh, 17th September. It is religion in Poland. All the time they speak about this date, but they forgot uh, to, to say that the Polish government is in this day. They escape Poland uh, in the time when the German forces Uh, surrounded Warsaw, so, uh, so it was a time when the Polish government go to Romania with Polish gold. Uh, but uh, we will speak about other subject, uh, about a very famous operation that the uh, uh, Soviet army crossed the border, uh, border which existed between Poland and um, and and. He, Soviet Union and they take land uh, uh, from the east from the Curzon line. So, Bruno. Yes, so um, of course, we uh, this day, the 17th of September 1939, uh, has to be uh, um, analyzed uh, in two ways. First of all, the general, the strategic situation in Europe. And uh, in this context, the decision, of course, uh, of Soviet Union after the uh, German aggression against Poland. That's one, one thing. And of course, the second one is uh, the um, fact that the Soviet army did take control of former Eastern Polish territories and uh, how they, uh, um, they uh, um, organized, let's say, the new government Uh, in those territories, of course, these both two questions are linked. But first one, we have to 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 take into account um, some basic fact about the geostrategical fact that, um, of course, uh, 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 if Soviet did. Uh, um, Um, they uh, send their uh, army 17th, the 17th of September. It is to a certain extent, but uh, not on, not only. It is to a certain extent the consequences of the so-called Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, uh, which uh, of course is a very complicated subject, but which um, uh, is uh, linked with the fact that the Western uh, power didn't want it to cooperate with Soviet Union against Nazi Germany and Soviet Union felt completely um, completely isolated especially that at that time uh, Soviet Union was at war with Japan in the Far East, and because of this general geostrategical situation, uh, Soviet Union decided to um, to sign an agreement of non-aggression with uh, Nazi Germany. So uh, to 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 make this isolation of Soviet Union a little bit um, uh, weaker than earlier. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that uh, during the Uh, these uh, 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 um, uh, German-Soviet uh, negotiations, the German did agree with Soviet that in case of war in Poland, uh, and Germany we know was preparing the, that war, but uh, um, uh, the, the, the text says that in case of war with Poland, the Vistula River will be mm, the, uh, the line Uh, that both countries recognize as uh, uh, their interest line uh, 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 in case of, of, of change. Um, and that's, that's one thing. But uh, it doesn't mean that, Pol uh, that Soviet Union and Germany were cooperating, and it doesn't mean that uh, uh, they, they planned the so-called uh, partition of Poland as it always uh, at his, at his as it is always said, since um, when the Germany attacked Poland the 1st of September, the Soviet Union didn't attack Poland at that moment. That's very important. The second thing which is very important, uh, and we have to take into account, is that the 12th of September in Abbeville in northern France, um, there was a reunion of the 
uh, uh, leadership of the Ar French and British army. And at that uh, reunion, they decided uh, that uh, France and Germany uh, and, and France and, and Great Britain, who were uh, which were uh, officially at war with Germany, would not attack Germany, and that even the French army, the French forces, who already conquered some villages, German villages, would come back to the border. They decided they will not attack uh, Germany and that they will not bomb Germany. In fact, this decision was a betrayal of Poland by uh, both France and, and, and Great Britain. And we can suppose now, because we know that the mm, NKVD, the, 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 the Soviet Secret Service, had people very high at high level in the British uh, administration uh, uh, that uh, um, the Stalin and Soviet Union was uh, new, that uh, France and, uh, and Great Britain decided five, year, five days earlier than the 17th of September that there will be no intervention uh, to help Poland, and that Poland is is uh, is uh, uh, has been sacrificed by its uh, for, uh, official allies, uh, and the situation then appeared for Soviet like uh, either Germany take all the Polish territory uh, up to the Soviet Polish border, either Soviet Union will intervene, and this situation was mm, uh, 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 very clear. Uh, because, uh, as I told you uh, earlier, the Ribbentrop Molotov Pact uh, 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 was uh, uh, in the, its secret part. It was written that the Vistula River is the line uh, for the German um, uh, interest. So, what is at the east of Vistula River is considered by Germany officially as a geostrategical. Uh, 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 territory which is important for Soviet Union. But the German army, uh, the 17th of September, the German army were going much, much uh, 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 at the east of the Vistula River because they were conquering uh, Białystok, they were trying to conquer Brest, Brest or Brest, uh, Litovsk, they uh, were in Lublin and, and, and uh, um, they didn't, in fact, uh, respected the so-called line, uh, the Vistula River line. So it was uh, ap uh, apparent that the German army um, is trying to conquer Lvov or Lviv or Lvov, um, and it is pushing toward the Soviet border. So it's the in this situation uh, that Soviet Union, uh, knowing that France and Britain will not help its Polish ally, when German army um, uh, uh, invaded territories, the Germans officially recognized as uh, strategically important for um, uh, uh, Soviet Union, and that. Uh, 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 in the same time, the Polish government, as you said, uh, was uh, leaving the Polish territory and not fighting again uh, German, but leaving the Polish territory to go to Romania, uh, leaving the Polish troops fighting with uh, with with German uh, uh, alone. So in this situation, and um, the, the the Soviet Union decided, the Soviet leadership decided that in this situation, at least. Uh, a, a Soviet army must take control of the former Polish, ter Polish territories where um, Belarusians and Ukrainians were the majority of the people. Because we have to remember that Eastern Poland um, was peopled mostly by Ukrainians and by Russians, and Poles there were quite uh, quite uh, uh, um, uh, numerous, but they still were in minority, especially if we add to by Russians and Ukrainians the Jewish population, which was very uh, numerous there, and which was not very uh, sympathetic to the Polish state for different reasons, and because of the, um, uh, my, uh, because they were an, another national minority, which was not really happy within the Polish state uh, uh, at the beginning of the Second World War. So uh, taking that into account, the Soviet knew that uh, a large part and probably the majority of the population of um, 
what will become Western Ukraine, uh, uh, Western uh, uh, Belarusia, and later uh, Lithuanian capital, uh, is in favor of Soviet Union, or, or at least prefer Soviets to the Poles. The Poles, of course, uh, were uh, um, in majority uh, uh, for sure against, uh, um, in favor of the Polish states and against uh, uh, Soviet army, but the Poles, as I told you, in these territories were uh, in minority. So we have also uh, to take that into account. In independently from what I, uh, I told uh, earlier, we have uh, to understand that um, Polish opinion uh, when the Soviet army crossed to um, to uh, eastern Poland was quite divided, uh, considering the Soviet decision. It was not so clear as it um, as it it is shown now in in the Polish media's because um, sometime we had a, a, a Polish army. Uh, who decided that they will not fight the Soviet army uh, because they are on war only with Germany and they are not on war with Soviet Union. Uh, some general or some officials uh, uh, decided that they will fight Soviet army and one of the most uh, well-known Polish general, the general Langner, who was the chief of the garnison of Lwów, uh, was uh, fighting actually uh, when the Soviet army uh, um, uh, crossed to Polish borders. The, uh, the general Langner was fighting in Lwów to uh, preserve Lwów from German uh, from German army. And when he heard that the um, German uh, the Soviet army was going inside Poland, he fought very very strongly because. He wanted to, to, to wait for the Soviet army so he can give the city to Soviet army and not to the German army. What he succeeded to do, he, 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 the German attacked him very strongly and he, he managed to, um, to defend the city so the German couldn't take the city. And when the city, uh, when the, the Soviet troop arrived at the east of the city, General Langner went to the um, to the um, Soviet uh, officers, uh, to the Soviet army, which was a, a accompanied by um, Nikita Khrushchev, who was the first secretary of the of the um, Communist Party in Ukraine at that time, and he told them, "I fought." Uh, 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 waiting for you because I wanted this city to be Slavic and not to be German. Uh, so I prefer the, the Red Army in Lvov than the German army. And um, because of that, uh, of course, General Langner was quite well treated by the Soviet army because he was uh, considered as a man who uh, was not anti-Soviet. And he managed later to go uh, to to go to Hungary and through Hungary to go to France and um, uh, uh, England, uh, because of course his his intention was to join the Polish army fighting on the side of the Allies against the German. And he managed, of course, to 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 get to uh, England. But when he get to England, the Polish of the Polish government in, in England considered him as a half traitor because he was too pro soviet and during the whole all second world war he was in put uh, at a completely secondary uh, um, uh, function in the north of scotland uh, and couldn't really um, participate to the war against German Reich, against Nazi Germany, because um, the right-wing uh, Polish generals and the right-wing Polish parties in London considered him, he was a little bit, <laughs> or he was too pro-Soviet because uh, I guess they would have preferred he uh, give the city to the Germans and not to the to the Soviets uh, because what they they had against him the fact that he uh, managed to save the city from German occupation and give it to the Soviet and for London Polish London government it was uh, something bad um, and. Uh, if we assume that the, 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 the worst enemy of Poland and of all nations of the world 
were uh, 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 Nazis and Nazi Germany, uh, whatever we think about Soviet Union and about communism, uh, 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 logically, of course, we can we consider that uh, a better Soviet than German in Lvov. Um, and that's exactly what he did. And this was the reason why he was considered as a not really uh, uh, um, 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 patriot by the London Polish government. And this is something very clear because it shows how uh, Polish opinion, but of, of course, especially police elite, were divided not um, on, on the German question, but mostly on the Soviet uh, question, and that the, the, the tradition of the pre-war Polish government, that the main enemy of Poland is not Germany, but Soviet Union, was still vivid during the Second World War, in spite of the fact um, what the German was actually doing in Poland against the uh, civilian population, against uh, Polish culture, against uh, 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 um, uh, against uh, uh, the, the, their 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 country, and and we have them to take that into account. So uh, that's the general strategical situation. Um, I uh, I uh, maybe uh, shortly or briefly uh, refer to now. Of course, the second thing we have to take into to to to, to analyze is the uh, what happened in the former Eastern Poland, which became Western Ukraine, Western Belarusia, and Eastern Lithuania, because we have to first to to take into account that the Soviet managed to. Uh, uh, take control of um, what is now Western Belarusia, Western Ukraine, and a little part of actual Poland, the Białystok territory, which is part of Polish territory now, but what, which was um, uh, uh, joined to Belarusia at that time. And we have also to take into account that the Vilno region, now is Vilnius, was given back by the Soviets to the Lithuanian government. And Lithuania was not part of Soviet Union, up to June uh, uh, 39, so from September 39 up to June 40, uh, uh, Vilnius was not Soviet, it was Lithuanian, due to uh, the Soviet army occupation of the city, they, and then the, they gave, gave back uh, the capital of Lithuania, because actually Vilnius is the capital of the Lithuania, to the still independent and not Soviet Lithuania. Um, because they 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 recognized the claim of the Lithuania uh, for this city, and it's the reason why when Lithuania joined USSR in June uh, forty, Vilnius uh, was uh, was up today still the capital of the Lithuanian Soviet Republic and later of the uh, now nowadays existing Lithuanian state. Um, so that's the situation. As I told you, uh, we we um, have more or less uh, statistics, uh, given that the population of the territories that were uh, uh, taken by the Soviets were was more or less 11 million population. Out of this 11 million population. Between three to five million were Poles. I say between three to five because, of course, uh, Polish statistics and Soviet statistics do not uh, agree on that. Um, so between and and in fact, it is a very difficult situation to to know exactly which which is the um, national belonging of a lot of people there because. Um, uh, most often, uh, the nationality was not decided by the language spoken, since uh, in those territories people were all, most often uh, speaking in dialects, which were not um, the literary Ukrainian or Polish or Belarusian. Uh, they were speaking mixed dialect, which were, which was something like Slavic dialects between Polish, Ukrainian, and um, and Belarusian, and it was sometimes very difficult to know if they were talking in Polish or in Ukrainian or in Belarusian. So most of the time, um, uh, people were uh, uh, linked. 
uh, with uh, one nationality according to their uh, official religious belonging. It means people who were Greek Catholics or uh, 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 Orthodox were uh, rather considered as Belarusians or Ukrainians, and where they were Roman Catholic, they were considered as uh, Poles. But in, in quite a long, uh, quite a lot of cases, uh, you had people uh, of um, belonging to the Catholic Church, the, the Latin Catholic Church. Uh, traditionally, it doesn't mean that they were believers because you could have atheists, but anyway, in Poland, you had to belong to some church because um, uh, all the civil status, uh, uh, the marriage, death, and so on, were, were organized by churches. So you couldn't be uh, officially atheistic in Poland be before uh, 1939. You had to be linked with one uh, religion or another. Um, so you had uh, what we can say formal uh, belonging to this or that church, uh, which doesn't mean that people were really believing in the, let's say, theological values of this or that church. Sometimes it was, you know, very, very, uh, very, uh, um, very um, um, unprecise. You know, you had people uh, going to the nearest church. Uh, which was for, for, let's say, Greek Catholic, uh, but they were baptized in the Latin Catholic Church of the country. Uh, so the paper were not very, very, very clear for that. And most of the time, um, at least in the countryside, people then don't, didn't really care if they were Polish, Ukrainians or Belarusian. It didn't uh, 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 change quite a lot in their life. And, you know, they, they, they were not really... Um, like uh, intellectuals uh, or uh, people from the cities, they were not really uh, national-minded. Uh, uh, for example, in, in, in especially in Polisia, it's a region uh, at the border of Belarus and Ukraine now. During the the, the um, uh, census, uh, when people ask them, "Are you? What is your your language? What is your your way? What is your language? It means what is your nationality?" Uh, quite a lot of people answered in Polish, Tutejszy. It means I'm from here. And they were not able to say if they were talking in Belarusian, in Ukrainian, or in Polish. They, they didn't knew, and they it was not important for them. For them, they were from here. So you had the in the census the rubric Tutejszy, when people couldn't answer Belarusian, Russian, Ukrainian, or or um, or Polish. So we have to take that into account. So that's the reason why I told that between three and five million um, out of 11 million were Poles. Uh, but even if we take into account the so-called five million, which the Polish state pretended um, uh, in these territories, still you have the majority, which is not Polish, which is Belarusian or Ukrainian, because uh, you have at least five million Poles, but you have six million uh, Ukrainians and Belarusians and Jews and Lithuanians in those territories. So whatever um, uh, statistic we take into account, the majority of the population was not Polish, uh, but the, Poli the Poles were, um, were, let's say, at the upper uh, Basically, most Poles were uh, in better situation than uh, non-Poles. Uh, of course, you had poor Poles in the eastern part of Poland, but um, you had two, two, uh, uh, three uh, categories of Poles, which were, of course, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in a better situation than the average situation. Of course, uh, the first privileged uh, um, uh, population in the East were the landlords. And the landlords in the East of Poland were all Poles, uh, and they were very influential within the Polish government. And to a certain extent, we can say that if Poland was a so conservative country during the interwar period, comparing not only with Soviet Union, but even with the Baltic states, 
let's say Lithuania or Lat Latvia, they realized at least the so-called land reform. Poland didn't realize the, the, the land reform. And um, it was to a large extent due to this uh, Eastern Polish landlords um, who used the um, Polish nationalism to um, legitimate the fact that a land re reform cannot be carried on because it would mean that a Polish property would be divided and given to Ukrainian and Belarusian peasants. Uh, and due to their nationalist uh, argumentation, the land reform was blocked all over Poland, not only in the east, but in the whole country. So um, when people from central Poland, when pe uh, peasants from central Poland couldn't get, uh, get uh, couldn't have uh, uh, land, uh, and they were, uh, uh, they were um, saying, you have no land here because if we give land to you in, let's say, Kielce or Warsaw region, then we will have to give the land um, uh, to Ukrainian and Belarusian in the East. And uh, your patriotism uh, 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 must show you that we must support Poles uh, in the East, so you have to resign from land reform in your own um, village, um, you understand how the, 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 the eastern uh, uh, territory of Poland were uh, playing a very reactionary role, not only for Ukrainian and Belarusia, but especially for Poles uh, from working class uh, origin inside the majority, uh, the, the Polish majority territories of central and western Poland. So that's one thing. Of course, the landlords couldn't then um, uh, 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 support uh, any land reform. Uh, and of course, they were governing uh, a lot of lands uh, where Belarusians uh, or Ukrainians, um, uh, uh, um, peasants were working for them. That's one, uh, one thing. The second thing is that um, uh, after the, uh, the Polish-Soviet uh, war, uh, the Polish army decided that a lot of former Polish soldiers who couldn't uh, have land, who couldn't have, uh, uh, have a, 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 a place to go back because uh, their village were destroyed or, or, or uh, they had no land and they had nothing, but still uh, um, they had fought for the Polish state, so they, they have to receive something. They received land in the East. So you had what we call the Polish colonists in Volhynia, in, 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 in Eastern Galicia, in, in, in Polesia, in different regions of the East. And you can, uh, you can uh, imagine how the Ukrainian and Belarusian peasants reacted to them because, you know, um, they don't receive land. Uh, because the Polish lander, landlord has land, but Polish people coming from Poznań area, from Łódź area, and from different regions of Poland receive land uh, um, uh, in their territories. So, of course, the, the, the Polish uh, 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 new peasants, let's, let's call them like that, the, the Polish uh, um, 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 colonists, were hated by the local population, and of course, at the time of uh, Soviet army uh, after the 17th of September, this hate burst because uh, local peasants uh, uh, wanted them to be out, to be kicked out. And they were most of the time kicked out because they were sent to uh, Soviet Asia um, and deported uh, to Soviet Asia. Uh, which, of course, in Poland uh, is now uh, uh, um, uh, de described as a, uh, you know, repression against poor Polish people who were forced to leave their land and to go uh, in very difficult condition of Soviet Asia, which is, which is the fact. But we have to think why they were there and why the local population did hate them. Um, of course, you have individual case where the situation, where uh, we can uh, observe some injustice from the Soviet administration. I don't deny that, but um, basically, uh, the Polish colonists in Eastern Poland 
were exactly treated as uh, um, Israeli colonists in, in occupied Palestinian territory, French colonists in Algeria during the colonial war, French col uh, uh, settlers in Vietnam, or uh, English settlers in Kenya or in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, and so on and so on. I mean, it's a typical colonial situation. And within the colonial situation, you have always the landlords who are very rich and profit from this situation, but you have also people from lower classes which are in who are who are integrated to this colonial system um, and who are uh, linked with a system that is uh, hated by the uh, locals, uh, including sometimes. Uh, Polish locals, because you had uh, in the Eastern Poland, of course, also uh, local Polish people, which were not specially happy to see um, uh, that uh, uh, a Polish colonist from Poznań area received good land when he is also poor uh, among other poor. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, 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 um, so we have to take that into account, and we have to take into account especially for Ukrainians, because it's not really the case for Belarusians, that you had also a competition within Ukrainian um, society of former Eastern Poland between communist and, let's say, left-oriented parties, but mostly communists, and uh, 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 nationalist Ukrainians, which were linked with the Greek Catholic Church. Uh, so, of course, when the communists were um, uh, trying to change the situation, they were always telling Ukrainian peasants that you have not to fight against Poles, you have to fight against colonists, and you have to fight against Polish landlords, but you don't fight Polish working class. Uh, but um, the nationalists were using the uh, nationalist feeling, telling them you are fighting against Poles. Uh, whatever they are, peasant workers, landlords, it doesn't matter. They are your enemies because of their uh, nationality and not because of their class. Uh, so you had these two ideology competing, and we will see the result of that later, during, especially during the German, the Nazi German occupation. But it's another uh, subject. S uh, 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 um, another thing we have to take into ac another category of Polish population we have to take into account is the urban po po population. M mostly, in big city, the Poles were the majority of the population, especially in cities like Vilno, the capital of Lithuania, or Lvov, uh, but um, in other um, cities, uh, the Poles were always uh, uh, the majority. Uh, and there, of course, the, situ the class situation was much more complicated because you had uh, a rich uh, bourgeois, let's say, but you had also intellectuals, you had workers, you had shopkeepers, you had rich people and very poor people. And um, Lvov or Vilno were, uh, were uh, cities where uh, quite a lot of, of, of Poles were joining uh, leftist organizations, socialist organization, communist organization, trade unions, and so on. Uh, and this, of course, uh, uh, has also take, to be taken into account. And, of course, the very numerous Jewish population, which was, of course, a minority uh, in eastern Poland, like everywhere, but um, uh, Jews were uh, concentrated in cities. So in big cities, they were counting for about more or less one third of the population in big cities. But in little cities like, let's say, Pinsk, uh, in Polisia, they could uh, represent about 70 or 80 even percent of the local population. So you had quite a lot of cities where the Jews were the big majority of the population. Of course, they were not very numerous in the countryside, but they were very numerous in the little cities. Um, and the Jewish population also was divided, like the Ukrainian between nationalists and, and, um, and, and uh, let's say, leftists and communists. It was the same with Jews uh, because you had the, let's say, the traditional religious uh, administ, uh, the traditional religious uh, rabbis and synagogues, which of course uh, were uh, anti-communist, anti-leftist, and they were just uh, uh, pushing Jews to pray and wait for the um, the Messiah to come, uh, who, who will liberate them. 
but uh, uh, if they pray well and if they accept uh, uh, power, um, that was their 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 argumentation. Of, of course, this argumentation was weaker and weaker in the uh, 20th century. It worked quite well in the 17th and 18th century, but from the beginning of the 19th century, quite a lot of Jews ceased to believe that they have to wait for the Messiah, but they maybe uh, the situation can improve earlier. Um, so some of them uh, 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 resigned from religion and uh, went on the socialist side, uh, creating their own organization, which was called Bund, or going in a socialist party or even later in communist party. And uh, against that, I would say, um, this trend was very, very uh, strong. Uh, and against that, uh, 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 you had the Zionist because the Zionism uh, is, a, a, is in fact a reaction created by the Jewish bourgeoisie um, to compete with uh, pro-left, pro-socialist, pro-Marxist uh, trends. Uh, since a, a lot of religious Jews uh, couldn't believe anymore that the, the, the arrival uh, of the Messiah would, uh, would solve every problem in the quite near future, uh, you had to serve them something else. So you serve them the ideology that they are a special nation, a special ethnic group, that they have their uh, right to have their own state, uh, like other nations, and that they have to compete with nations like do or like were supposed to do the Poles, the Ukrainians, the Belarusians, and so on. And the Jews have to fight for their own um, own uh, uh, own uh, state. And in this situation, of course, uh, uh, the Zionists were competing mostly with the Jewish left, which was internationalist and which was fighting for the right to Jews to live there where they live in a socialist society where um, racism, anti-Semitism and so on will disappear um, uh, and make them true uh, citizens. So well, you can imagine that quite a lot of Jews uh, were um, seeing the Soviet army as a liberation army uh, because, um, you know, the Soviet we can of course, talk about what was the Soviet Union uh, in 1939, but we cannot, we cannot deny one basic fact, uh, is that the um, uh, Soviet Union was a multinational state and that um, the social promotion you could have in Soviet Union didn't depend on national origin. I mean, you could be Jew, Georgian, Russian, Pole, Ukrainian, whatever you wanted. Uh, you are, in fact. Um, you could uh, participate to uh, education, to uh, university, to uh, administration, to party, to um, army, and so on and so on. So for the Jews who were banned, uh, from and uh, like the Ukrainians and Belarusians uh, uh, um, who were banned uh, to participate uh, to Polish administration, we have to take into account, for example, that the Polish state railways, uh, when you when you wanted to 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 um, to be uh, hired by state railways in the pre-war Poland. Uh, you had to show your, um, uh, your, uh, that you are baptized in the Catholic, Latin Catholic Church. If you were a Greek Catholic, if you were Orthodox, or if you were Jews, you were banned uh, from candidacy to, um, to have any, um, any, any function in the Polish uh, state railways. I give the, the example of Polish state railways, but it's exactly the same for all ad uh, state administration and public an uh, uh, administration. So you can uh, understand that um, how would you like a Belarusian, a Jew, um, a Ukrainian, uh, in 1939, considering the Polish state is his state. It's not his state because his children cannot be hired in that state which is supposed to be um, democratical and which is supposed to be um, uh, his state. Uh, so, uh, because of that, uh, um, uh, uh, non-Poles were uh, uh, quite happy 
to see uh, uh, the arrival of the Soviet army. For the Jews, it was um, even uh, uh, much more clearer because um, they knew that uh, if, we, if the, German, the Soviet army wouldn't have arrived in, in, in Eastern Poland, it would have been the German Nazi army. And of course, they were uh, at least uh, sufficiently uh, conscious that um, whatever they thought about Polish state, uh, the Polish state was much better than the German Nazi state for them. Uh, but since the Polish state was, uh, uh, was um, destroyed, uh, then their choice was Soviet Union or Nazi Germany. And I mean, I mean every, every Jew uh, 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 knew that he will have, uh, uh, he has no choice. I mean, he, Soviet Union was the, the only solution for him, um, even if he was, uh, let's say, uh, anti-communist, but still, uh, at least he, he knew that the Soviet were not racist, were not anti-Semitic, uh, which made the difference between, between um, with, with, non, uh, with Nazi Germany. So we have to take into account that when the Soviet army conquered Eastern Poland, the majority of the population, the majority of the population was maybe not pro-Soviet, but at least feel that the Soviets are better than what they had earlier, uh, and better, of course, than the danger of German invasion. That's, that's for sure for Ukrainian, Belarusians, uh, and the Jews. Um, considering, uh, uh, um, considering Poles, then the situation was, of course, much more different. Quite a lot of them, as I told you, were in favor of uh, uh, the former Polish state. So uh, they understood very quickly that uh, within the Soviet state, um, they will not have the, uh, the um, let's say, the privileged situation they had uh, at the Polish time. Um, and that they, they, they are, uh, you know, observed by the local non-Polish population with, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, um, an atmosphere of revenge. Uh, and this was, of course, the case, uh, especially in the countryside, uh, where Poles were quite isolated, were, were in minority, uh, and were more or less considered as, to, as linked with uh, uh, landlords or um, Polish colonists. Situation was not exactly the same in the cities, like Lvov, for example, where uh, you had quite a lot of intellectuals, you had quite a lot of workers, and you had quite a lot of, um, let's say, uh, left-wing uh, opinions. So in, this, in the cities, you had, uh, I would say, minority of Poles, but you had um, uh, Poles who were, uh, um, you know, who were um, trying to, to adapt to Soviet reality and take part in the Soviet uh, in the Soviet uh, administration. I give you some examples because they don't really want to mention them um, uh, during uh, nowadays in Poland. But I mean, in Lwów, the, the, the biggest city uh, that was uh, um, uh, annexed to Soviet Union, it was of course a city where the large majority of the population was Polish. You had the, the University of Lwów and you had the Polytechnic of Lwów, which were two higher education uh, institutions, which were one of the top of all Poland before the Second World War. Um, but we have to take into account that these two institutions were not closed by the Soviets. They were uh, they functioned up to the uh, to the German invasion in in June 1941 and top professors from um, uh, this institute this institution were uh, became uh, soviet uh, uh, teachers and soviet uh, uh, searchers uh, uh, very well known for example uh, um, uh, poet, uh, Polish poet uh, Tadeusz Boy Zelensky was teaching at University of Lwów up to, to the German invasion in June uh, 1941. More, more than that, you had at the Polytechnical uh, um, uh, uh, um, University of Lwów one professor who was Kazimierz Bartel. And Kazimierz Bartel was a I guess a chemist. I think he was a chemist. Anyway, he was in the the, the exact science. 
um, at the Polytechnic, but he was the former prime minister of Piłsudski. In 1926, he was prime minister of Poland um, under Piłsudski administration, and he he was uh, um, a, a leading professor of the Polytechnic up to uh, June 1941, when the German crossed in the city and killed him. As as most of the the, the teacher of the um, uh, of most of the Polish teachers of the uh, of these two uh, universities, the Polytechnical and the um, uh, General University of of Olwów. We have to take into account the fact that the Bartel I told you about Kazimierz Bartel, um, two months before the German invasion, was taken to the Kremlin for a discussion with Stalin. Um, I mean, the former prime minister of Piłsudski was received by Stalin. Uh, um, uh, so, you know, uh, of course, we don't know what they said because he was killed two months later but by the Germans. But uh, 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 this shows that, you know, the situation was not uh, black and white. Uh, you could suppose that he should have been one of the first men to be at least arrested, if not shot, because of his political um, activity before the Second World War. After all, he was the prime minister of a government, of a Polish government, which was not, uh, uh, which had bad relation with Soviet Union. He was leading the government, uh, uh, which uh, uh, provided a rather an anti-Soviet policy. And uh, but he was a scientist, and um, he was uh, uh, recognized as as so by the Soviet uh, administration, by the Soviet Ministry of Education. So things are not so clear as they show it now. Of course, you had Poles that were repressed uh, and even executed after the arrival of um, the Soviet army. You had Poles that were deported in, in uh, let's say, Siberia or Kazakhstan, and that's, of, of course, for sure. And sometimes um, we, can, uh, we can consider these uh, decisions are um, as unjust. Sometimes we can understand them because uh, people uh, in these territories really hated uh, some landlords or some uh, Polish functionaries or some Polish colonists, but sometimes, of course, uh, um, people uh, were uh, deported who were not uh, um, uh, responsible for any uh, bad uh, behavior before the Soviet army arrived there. But in the same time, we had Polish people who were uh, living um, uh, quite a normal life um, in the new Soviet uh, territories, and some of them were even actively uh, engaged in favor of the Soviet administration. Not only former communists like Gomułka, Bierut, and so on, who were there at that moment, but uh, uh, you had people with, uh, um, you had even a, a Polish newspaper, Nowe Widno Kręgi, who was, um, who was uh, um, published in Lwów. Uh, you had um, uh, even a discussion with the Soviet administration uh, if Lwów city uh, could become an autonomous republic. Uh, like you had a lot of in, so in Soviet Union uh, and an autonomous republic um, uh, within the uh, Soviet Republic, uh, the Ukrainian Soviet Republic. And if it didn't ha happen, it's not really due to Moscow, it's due to Khrushchev, because Khrushchev was the, the, the man uh, in charge of Ukrainian uh, Soviet Republic, and he is known uh, to have uh, always favored the, nation, the Ukrainian nationalism, and the Ukrainian nationalists didn't want to have any Polish autonomy within uh, uh, Soviet Ukraine. So we, when we observe the, poli the Soviet policy in in Soviet Union, uh, the the, the Soviet policy concerning Poles in Soviet Union, we have first to take into account one thing they don't want to, uh, us to know is that the, uh, the policy toward Poles was completely different in um, newly uh, annexed to Soviet Union 
Ukrainian territories and in newly annexed to Soviet Union by Russian territories. I mean, the, um, it was much easier for a Pole uh, to um, uh, live in Grodno, which was part of by Russian SSSR, than to live in, let's say, Wutsk uh, or uh, Tarnopol, which was part of the Ukrainian SSSR. Uh, and this has also to be to uh, 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 it's an important uh, 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 subject that has not been really uh, analyzed. It is the role of Khrushchev uh, in promoting nas Ukrainian nationalism within Soviet Ukraine, um, because uh, we have a, quite a lot of, of information that he was, you know, maybe he was not a Ukrainian nationalist, but he was linked with his wife that was coming from Helm. Uh, Helm is actually a Polish town at the Ukrainian-Polish uh, border. Uh, but uh, Ukrainian nationalists up to today, uh, they claim that Helm is, uh, should belong to Ukraine, not to Poland. And she was from there, and she tried... Uh, quite a lot to push her her uh, husband to push Stalin uh, to annex also to Ukraine the Helm area, uh, the area she is coming from, and it shows how she was very very linked with na Ukrainian nationalism, and to a certain extent, and directly we can say that Khrushchev was linked with Ukrainian nationalism, um, and that's why his policy again uh, 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 was much more anti-Polish not anti-landlords only, as I told earlier, but mostly anti-Polish, and much more anti-Polish than the policy of, let's say, Boris Ponomarenko, who was the first secretary of the Communist Party of Belarusia, where the Poles had not the same, uh, let's, let's say, um, um, disagreement uh, they had in, in Soviet Ukraine at the time. Um, uh, the problem for the Poles was that the, the biggest Polish city in that territory was Ruf, which was, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, belonging to Ukrainian uh, Soviet Republic. So the idea to create a Polish autonomous region in Lvov uh, was uh, successfully uh, uh, eliminated by Khrushchev, but still, in spite of that, the um, Polish, the city uh, 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 was still a, a, a Polish city up to 1944, 1945. Um, and of course, during the Soviet time, the first Soviet time, uh, it was a center of Polish culture and the center of the for sure, minority of Poles who were um, collaborating with the Soviets, and we have also to think in, to think to take one thing into account. After the Polish state failed, um, was destroyed in September 1939. From the very beginning, you had the Polish resistance movement uh, all over former Polish territories. But there is a complete difference between the situation that occurred in. German occupied territories and the situation that occurred in the uh, territory which were annexed to Soviet Union. Since uh, the Polish resistance movement in, in, in German occupied territory was very active and the German never, never uh, um, managed to destroy it. From the very beginning, it means from October 1939 up to the, sec the at the end of Second World War, the uh, different Polish resistance movements were massively supported by the population, and they, they, they the German uh, um, had some success here and there, but basically they never managed to destroy it. The situation in, 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 in newly Soviet territories was completely different. They, the, the, the Polish government in, in London, in Paris, and later in London, in Angers, in fact, and later in London, they tried to, um, to, um, to uh, uh, organize also in Soviet uh, territory a Polish resistance movement, but it never worked very well because it was destroyed from the very beginning, and as soon as there was an atom to create a new network, it was always destroyed. And why it was destroyed? Because the NKVD, the, the Polish, uh, the Polish, the Soviet um, uh, uh, secret uh, service, managed to recruit Poles who were collaborated with them 
uh, and trying to destroy Polish organizations which were linked with the Polish government in 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 London or uh, or in France uh, because you had some part of Polish people who were uh, on the Soviet side. You had no Polish people on the German side. Um, uh, you had uh, traitors, you had uh, uh, people from German origin or pretending to have German origin who were collaborating with the Nazi. But the mass of the population was uh, uh, always in opposition, in resistance against the German occupation. It was not the case with Poles uh, within Soviet Union. Within Soviet Union, you had quite a lot of Poles um, who were against Soviet and probably the majority, but uh, but you had quite a lot of Poles who were supporting Soviet Union uh, because, uh, you know, within Soviet Union, at least you had um, a situation where um, you had Polish education, you had Polish language, you had Polish newspaper, you had uh, uh, at least some Polish life. And the best example, of course, is, uh, is uh, the... Uh, the University of Ruf I to, 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 told you about. Officially, it became a Ukrainian university, but still every uh, every courses were uh, were organized in Polish language, and you had even the, the faculty of Polish philology and so on. You had the Ukrainian ph philology there, of course, but you had, of course, uh, also the Ukrainian, uh, the Polish philology, and especially you had this very famous uh, writer Tadeusz Boyzelenski, um, who was not actually in the in the um, uh, Polish phi philology department of the Lwów University. He was in the French phi philology department because he was, of course, a specialist of French literature. But anyway, he's he was a famous Polish author um, and a very secularized and anti-church. Uh, author uh, who the actual Polish uh, leadership do not really like, so they don't mention him, but he was a very, very famous man uh, during the whole pre-war period uh, because of his, uh, um, uh, you know, his very humoristic attacks on church, uh, on ultra conservatism, on petit bourgeois uh, uh, moralism, uh, uh, and so on and so on. Um, and he, you know, he was a Soviet functionary from 1939 up to 1941 when he was killed by the German. Um, because the German uh, uh, killed the Polish intelligentsia in Lwów, not the, not the Soviet, the German, including, as I told you, the former prime minister of Poland, Kazimierz Bartel. So that's the, the reality. The reality is complex, and I don't deny that there was a lot of bad decision, of error, of, let's say, even crime committed uh, uh, during that time. Uh, but basically, the uh, situation was complicated. People were divided. Uh, people uh, 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 had different opinions uh, about the Soviet, but the situation was not clear cut that all Poles were against Soviet and all um, uh, Soviets were uh, repressing Poles because they were supposed to be Russian nationalists or whatever uh, um, people say in Poland today. Um, uh, if there was a problem uh, uh, in a, a nationalist problem in Pol in East, former Eastern Poland during the Soviet time, it was not really the Russian, let's say, nationalism. It was the Ukrainian nationalism, which were, was functioning inside the Ukrainian society, but which was functioning also to a certain extent among um, uh, um, Communist Party militants uh, from this area uh, who were much more Ukrainian nationalists than they would have been Russian nationalism. Uh, basically, if you look at things uh, objectively, um, when Poles had problem with uh, administration, with militia, with, uh, with uh, uh, party uh, organization, most of the case they were looking to have a Russian who can protect them against Ukrainians. Uh, and, you know, the Russians were, were much more um, uh, uh, neutral uh, in the rivalry between Ukrainians and Poles than the um, 
Ukrainian functionaries. And as I told you, it was much better to be in Belarusian for a Pole to be in the Belarusian Soviet Republic than in the Ukrainian uh, uh, Republic. And this is important because it shows that you know Soviet Union was not a monolithic state, and that you had quite a lot of contradiction in these states. And unfortunately, uh, but realistically, these contradictions were also also inside the Soviet administration, inside the Soviet NKVD, and inside the Soviet Party. Um, and that's the basic problem. And as, as I tell very often, we have to study the class struggle and the national issues in Soviet Union um, and not to consider Soviet Union in the 30s like a monolithic uh, communist, let's say, state. Uh, it's, it is much more complicated. I mean, it's a vivid society divided by a lot of contradictions. And, you know, Moscow center uh, didn't manage to, uh, um, to control everything as uh, the Western propaganda is trying to show us that, you know, uh, Moscow and Soviet Union was a totalitarian state and that everybody uh, was under control of the central um, uh, police state in Moscow. Uh, it was not the case. Uh, quite of, quite often, um, when people were repressed in Soviet Union, they tried to uh, uh, to have uh, contact with Moscow against local repression and local uh, uh, administration. Sometimes they managed to have this contact with Moscow, but sometimes the contact with Moscow was cut by uh, local mafias and so on. So. Okay, thank you, Bruno. Um, I will read uh, one thing about the Nina Khrushchev about you. you ah, said. Nina Khrushchev, yeah. <laughs> yes, it, it's written that uh, he was born in. Uh, she, she was born uh, in the name of Kucharchuk, mm -hmm. uh, and she was born in uh, Vasilov, called Tomaszowa na Lubelszczyźnie. Yeah, this is the home region. Yeah. And uh, uh, interesting thing is that in September, in September 39, she uh, she fo she found uh, she found her parents, which she didn't see from uh, 1920. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I would like to ask you about the class struggle in in uh, in, in this period. Uh, could you say something about what's happened with bourgeoisie, what's happened with with landlords, and what's happened with uh, with uh, clergy oh, yeah. in, in this region? Yeah, first of all, bourgeoisie in Poland was very weak because Poland was not an industrial country, as you know, and Eastern Poland was uh, less industrialized than Western Poland. So the bourgeoisie was very, very weak in, po in Eastern Poland uh, because you had very few industrial uh, industries, as, except for Lvov um, and Vilno, the big cities. You had no industry almost, or if you had industry, it was very little uh, wood factories uh, in Polesia and uh, Białystok and Grodno area, but and uh, but it's difficult to say it it was a bourgeoisie, especially because some of those factories were state owned because there was no bourgeois to 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 lead this factory. So we we have also this to take into into account. We had a lot of petty bourgeoisie who were uh, partly Polish, partly Jewish, mostly, uh, and who were very poor, uh, and we cannot consider them as real bourgeois. Uh, but we had, and that's very important, landlords. Um, uh, of course, when the Soviet uh, crossed in, in, in Western, in Eastern, former Eastern Poland, they nationalized every factories and, uh, 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 and uh, little by little they organized state-owned uh, 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 um, uh, factories. But um, uh, factories or, uh, or uh, um, you know, uh, shops and so on. But um, uh, uh, we cannot really Th uh, uh, talk about a bourgeoisie there, uh, uh, except for some individuals, 
Uh, and as I told you, the bourgeois there, they could be Poles or, or Jews. Um, uh, and what is important is that, uh, and it, it shows the, the, that the nationality issue was not the main issue for the Soviet. It means when the, 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 the Soviet did repress um, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, privileged class in these territories, uh, they they managed to arrest uh, Polish people like they were arresting Jewish people. Uh, and quite a lot of time, the Jewish people were arrested by Jewish. Uh, because you had Jews in the Nkavute and you had Jews that ha were arrested by the Nkavute. So, I mean, the national question was not the most important in this region. Uh, it was rather the class uh, situation. Of course, the landowners, uh, they, 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 they were, of course, very actively repressed. Um, most of uh, the, the land reform was, of course, decreed from the very beginning, and they were arrested and deported um, to um, to uh, uh, Eastern Soviet Union. Um, and the one who were uh, considered as uh, linked with the former uh, Polish regime was were even um, uh, arrested, sent to jail, or even executed. Um, and it was more or less the same with priests, uh, with Catholic priests, not only with Catholic priests, but mostly with Catholic priests, quite a lot of them, not all of them, of course, but quite a lot of them was considered as supporters of the former uh, fascist regime, that was the, the name uh, of the Pilsudski regime under Soviet. So they, uh, uh, everybody who was linked, more or less linked, um, sometime it was, of course, exaggerated, but uh, everybody who was more or less linked with the regime or the social, political uh, or trade union organization of the former regime was considered as a fascist. And it was not only Poles. Uh, for example, I, um, the, the, the uh, Zionists or the uh, traditional uh, uh, Orthodox rabbis and uh, traditional Jewish organization were quite co cooperating with the former Polish a Polish regime before 1939, and they were also subjected to re, to repression, as were the the the, the Polish uh, cooperating with the regime. The only exception at the beginning, at least, were the the Ukrainian nationalists. The Ukrainian nationalists at the very beginning were were not disturbed, I would say, by the um, by the um, uh, Soviet administration which shows how Khrushchev was, you know, ambiguous against them. But at the, the end of the Soviet time, uh, when it appeared that the nationalists were really strong in that region, uh, then the Soviet began to, uh, uh, from Moscow, to organize the repression of the nationalist uh, um, um, organization in, in, in Western Ukraine. And at that time, they changed policy towards Poles because they began to understand that um, not all Poles are uh, 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 anti-Soviets, uh, as were uh, trying to, to convince them nationalists uh, uh, who made, you know, different intrigues to 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 direct the uh, Soviet repression against Poland and not against them. So, you, uh, yeah, we have to take into account the fact that we had a three uh, a political game in, in Soviet Union. You had Poles, uh, uh, communists, and Ukrainian nationalists. Yes, but... Uh... And this land reform uh, in, 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 in Poland after, after Second World War, land reform, it was a privatization of the land. And this land reform uh, in, uh, in 1949, it was creating collective farms or it was no, no. giving no, land no, no. It for was, the No, it was the same. Uh, it was a land reform. Uh, like uh, in Poland after the Second World War, uh, peasants received land on their own. And at the end of the Soviet time, it means in 1941, uh, Soviet began to, to promote the creation of kolkhoz. 
But uh, up to the end of the Soviet, the first Soviet times, up to 1931, uh, the majority of land was um, was uh, private property, uh, or a newly acquired private property of the peasants. Uh, in fact, the Soviet in, in, in former Poland, but also in Baltic countries, uh, 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 realized there the uh, Bolshevik policies of the early 20s. As a, of course, their further intention was to collectivize, but the collectivization wasn't done then. It was the first step, and after there would have been collectivization, but the German arrived, of course, uh, and it, um, <laughs> it uh, changed the situation very Profoundly, so after the Second World War, when the, the Soviet came back to these territories, uh, the land was still private, and the collectivization was done at the end of the forties. There, like in the Baltic state, and the private property of industry. No, was... that uh, that was nationalized. The, uh, uh, industry and shops were all nationalized. So in the city, it was very clear. Uh, so, uh, so from the level of the of the reform towards socialism, we can say that it was good. Uh, uh, it was a step to in good di direction. Yeah, it was a step, but of course, it was not everything. Everything was not done in one day, as uh, we could have supposed. I mean, the Soviets were. Uh, you know, they, they knew that the um, peasants in, in Galicia, they wanted half their private property. And they knew that if they don't give them, they will lose their support. So they tried to have their support. And the, the idea that was that uh, step by step, they will be convinced for collectivization. But for the moment, uh, you have to gain their support. So give them land. And then with the uh, uh, later we will change policy, but not 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 so quickly. So it was a step by step policy. Okay, so now it's time to the hard questions, uh, oh. which are spoken very often by the anti-communist propaganda. So, firstly, uh, uh, could uh, in the in the eastern Poland there was a Polish army with have uh, three hundred thousand. Uh, uh, soldiers. Yeah, and uh, uh, most of these people was uh, they was uh, they were arrested by the Soviets. Yeah, as, and, and, as, as a war prisoner. Yes. Yes, and very, very, uh, very quickly they were liberated. Yes, of course, could, because could say, the soldiers were what was... liberated and officers were not. It was on class on, on class by basis. I mean, soldiers, uh, what, uh, if they were Poles, Ukrainian, uh, uh, Jews, uh, they were of course belonging to working classes, so they were liberated. Uh, uh, officers, uh, even reserve officers, were coming from higher classes, so they were not liberated, uh, and that's the basic difference, of course. And the, the, the decision was based on class criteria. That's of course. But they were liberated when? Uh, at the end, of, very quickly, at the end of 1939, beginning of uh, on 1914, it was in two, three months they were uh, they were liberated. Uh, it was very quick for them uh, because you know they were they were they were recognized by the Soviet power as a, as a working class people uh, who were mobilized in the army at the beginning of the war, but they had nothing to do with the Polish state, with the police administration, uh, and they had nothing to 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 be um, to be um, uh, um, considered as enemy. They were rather considered as potential class ally. And in, especially from the very beginning, it's very important to, to uh, symbolically, but it's very important uh, uh, um, when, the, 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 when the, the, the Polish army uh, uh, um, uh, 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 military were arrested uh, and uh, as war, war prisoners, 
Uh, they were, of course, put in camps or in different, uh, uh, you know, area where they could uh, uh, be um, be um, uh, regrouped. And uh, from the very beginning, from the first day, the best places were were given to the uh, soldiers and the worst one to the officers. And the officers had to work physically uh, under the supervision of the soldiers who were um, who were leading them uh, to to make you know different uh, uh, physical work. So it was uh, from the very beginning uh, a, a very clear propaganda that now the soldiers are the masters and the officers are the servants. Oh, I, I, I never heard about this. Yeah, but it's very, <laughs> it's very interesting. Okay, so now uh, could, could you say something about the um, Jews, uh, Jew uh, who, who lived in Poland? Uh, if it's true that when the war is started, I am t- saying about the 1st September, mm-hmm. when they starting uh, mass. Uh, emigrate to Soviet Union? And if yes, how many Jews from Western Poland came to East Poland or came to Soviet Union? That's difficult to say, but, you know, Jewish community was very, very, very uh, uh, different. Uh, You had part of Jews were uh, more or less highly educated. When I say educated, it doesn't mean always intellectuals. I would say also that uh, working class workers, Jewish workers, were highly educated. When I say highly educated, it doesn't mean that they had a diploma, but they they were very uh, highly politically educated. You know, the the, the Jewish workers in Łódź, uh, in Warsaw, um, they could be very poor, but uh, they were uh, very, very interested in com- uh, understanding the world, uh, reading books, uh, 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 and they were very politicized. Of course, they were um, uh, very aware what is uh, Germ- what is Nazism and what is Nazi Germany, and because of that, this part of the Jews uh, were rather trying to escape to Soviet Union. But uh, the mass of the Jews, which were concentrated in little towns, uh, what they called the shtetl, in you know towns like thirty uh, thousand uh, city, like Minsk, Mazowiecki, uh, Radzimin, and, and and things like that, and cities like that, these people were very traditional. They were not at all um, interested by politics, as I told you. They were they were waiting for the Messiah, so they were rather uh, working. In little shops um, and uh, praying most of the time, the rest of the time, and waiting uh, for the Messiah and trying to behave as religious uh, Jews uh, who what is a thing who takes a lot of time because uh, if you want to have a really religious Jewish life, mm, uh, you have a lot of time to cons- to 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 take not only for praying but for uh, 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 doing different things linked with, with the kosher food and so on. So you have no time for for politics. You have no time for. Uh, reading uh, non-religious books and so on and so on. So these people were completely um, unconscious of what is happening. They knew more or less that the Nazi Germany, they were not very good people. But for them, it was, you know, the tradition. They said, oh, for 2000 years, we had uh, 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 Judeophobia, we had anti-Semitism. Uh, we, will, we will manage to adapt like we did uh, all during those uh, centuries. Um, and, you know, the German is a civilized nation, so, you know, uh, we will manage to, to breed them, to corrupt them, and to make them to behave a little bit better, like uh, we did during the First World War, like we did with different anti-Semitic groups earlier, and it will not be the problem. And that's, also, of course, why uh, a few traditional Jews 
escape to Soviet area. Because for them, you know, they had the, the let's say, for them, the Germans were the traditional anti-Semitic. They couldn't imagine, of course, the, the degree of anti-Semitism of Hitlerism because, you know, they they were not politicized, so they didn't seem very big difference between Hitler and, let's say, um, the Tsarist anti-Semitism. Uh, but on the other side, they were be- very religious. For So for them, the worst was 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 um, Soviet Union because as they said um, uh, the German can kill some of us but they couldn't imagine of course that the German will 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 kill all of them the German can kill some of us but the Soviet will will kill all our souls um, and the souls of our children so for them Soviet Union was much worse so they didn't they, they they didn't want the German, but they didn't escape to Soviet area because uh, um, they were they were uh, they were afraid of atheism, uh, and they, I think that they were much more afraid of atheism than uh, afraid by Nazism. Uh, and and uh, that's the reason why uh, they were all slaughtered later because you know uh, uh, they had no resistance uh, uh, culture so they didn't knew how to 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 fight against Nazi but they didn't even want to fight against Nazi most of them because they were um, they were so religious that they were saying that oh if God wants uh, uh, Jews to be exterminated it's the, the God's decision. Maybe the Jews were, uh, you had some rabbis do, that were telling that the Germans are, the, um, are, are bad, but, you know, the Nazis are bad, but it's because the Jews were too secularized and they made a lot of sin and God is punishing them through the Nazis um, and we have to accept the law and to uh, pray God he will forgive us and so on and so on. So they did, they even didn't support the Warsaw uh, Jewish uprising. Um, You know, you had no traditional Jews in the Warsaw uh, uh, ghetto uprising. For them, you know, to take arm against the the chief is against uh, God's law. Okay, so now very hard question uh, about uh, the 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 anti-communist propaganda all the time speak about the collaboration of the uh, soviet union and uh, nazi germany so they speak about the collaboration of the armies that one uh, city was uh, taken by germany germans and after they give it this city to the soviets and also uh, and they speak a lot about the collaboration of NKVD and Gestapo. The, the NKVD in this propaganda give the names of communists who lived in the general gubernia and uh, send the, I don't know, that... Um, what can you say about this? No, I, 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 I'm not specialist of this issue, so I don't want to take, uh, you know, to, to say something that could be could be uh, wrong. Um, the, the issue of the border that was decided between Soviet Union and Nazi Germany, of course, is a complicated uh, issue. But um, what we can uh, take into account is that more or less, of course, there is the exception of the Białystok region, but more or less, um, the um, Soviet Union didn't try to force German to give them the territory up to the Vistula River, as I, I told earlier. Uh, they uh, claimed only the territories where more or less non-Poles were the, the majority by the Russians or, or Ukrainians or eventually Lithuanians. Um, and that's something we have to take uh, to take into account, uh, that the border were more or less dis- decided from the Soviet side on ethnographic, uh, ethnographical line um, and not uh, on, uh, let's say, uh, not like a partition of a country that has to be destroyed uh, and a, a nation that has to be destroyed. Uh, we can, of course, consider that the uh, 
that for the Poles, um, the situation was not good, but we cannot deny that um, in Soviet Union, um, uh, the repressions were not uh, uh, especially carried on uh, on national uh, issues, since we had people from different origins, including Poles, collaborating or taking part in the Soviet administration, and we had people uh, 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 of different origin, including Russians, uh, who were uh, repressed. So the logic of Soviet Union is completely different from the logic of uh, Nazi Germany, and as I told you, the German closed Polish universities, the, the Soviet didn't. Uh, so there, it's not the same, uh, and and we have to take that into account. Um, uh, and it explains why some Poles were on the side of Soviets and were are now uh, accused to be, let's say, collaborators. But if we ask that, then we have to ask why there were no collaborators on the German side. I mean, because the German were different and the Soviet were different. And in 1939, 1940. Uh, quite a lot of Polish people were, of course, very shocked by the, 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 the fact that Poland lost the war so quickly. Um, uh, quite a lot of Polish people were considering that the Polish government who left them to the uh, foreign invasion, uh, so to go to Romania uh, and, and have a happy life uh, outside Poland, or trying to have a happy life outside Poland, um, uh, 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 were traitors. And in this situation, quite a lot of Poles had to, uh, not the choice between Poland and Germany, but between Soviet Union and Germany. Uh, and it was quite clear for a lot of Poles that better to be Pole within Soviet Union than to be a Pole within Nazi Germany. Um, uh, you know, people didn't know in 1940 what will be the result of the war five, year, five years later. Um, and this has to be uh, taken into, uh, into consideration, whatever we think about about this this uh, this situation considering the, the so-called collaboration between Nazi Germany and and Soviet Union we have to 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 be very serious about that um of course Soviet uh, uh, and uh, 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 and uh, Nazi had contact because they are, they were uh, uh, states having diplomatic relation of course Soviet um uh, uh, and Nazi uh, secret services has had contact like all over the world. I mean, during Cold War, uh, 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 secret services of both sides have contact. Do you think that now the American secret services, the Russian secret services, the Syrian secret services, the Iranian secret services, or the Chinese secret services have no contact? Of course they have contact. Um, because it's uh, the, the law of, 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 of secret services is to fight one against the other, but also to have contact and exchange some information when the information can be positive. The question of uh, people who were uh, supposed, it has to be uh, studied a bit more, uh, uh, more uh, uh, carefully anyway, but of course some people were given by the Soviets to the Germans, like some people were given by the German to the Soviet. Um, uh, and of course we have in the Polish situation the case of uh, 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 the, so the, the Communist Party of Poland, uh, which, as you know, were accused to have been penetrated by the Polish uh, secret services and uh, was um, um, uh, suppressed, was uh, um, uh, um, destroyed by the Comintern, by the decision of the Comintern. So that's a fact. And, uh, uh, and we have to take into account the fact that um, a Polish communists uh, 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 were uh, seen at the Kremlin with, you know, uh, potential enemies, uh, and we see it ex especially, for example, uh, if we look at Polish communists in Soviet Union at the time, for example, Gomułka, who was a former uh, uh, Communist Party of Poland member, during Gomułka, during Soviet times in Lwów, he was just, um, how, how do you say, the contable, uh, um, 
Uh, in English, uh, I forgot. Uh, account, uh, no? <laughs> yeah, I, I, in, in a factory of Lvov, he was uh, not very important. He was just a trade union militant, but he was not a communist party of Soviet Union militant. He didn't, uh, he was not admitted to the party. He was just uh, uh, admitted in the trade union uh, because he was, you know, under uh, under uh, surveillance and most communists were uh, at the time um, treated with some uh, you know, some uh, um, suspicion. Uh, of course, we can criticize that, but we have also to take into account the fact, which is obvious, that the Polish secret services before 1939 really managed to uh, to 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 to, to um, uh, organize among communists, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, spy uh, organization, which is normal. So, um, uh, uh, not every man who had uh, who was belonging to the Communist Party of Poland were was a real true communist. You had some uh, Polish government agent. And of course, we can um, discuss if the Soviet and Kavuda didn't exaggerate. Uh, but the situation was not uh, black and white. Um, and the same uh, ha was happening in other communist party. Of course, I'm, I'm convinced that the uh, NKVD did a lot of error uh, and uh, 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 made uh, organized repression that are completely unjustified and unjust, that's for sure. But uh, we have to understand that situation was complicated uh, and that, you know, you had a, a real war situation uh, in which things were not very, very, very clear. Um, uh, uh, and, um, and this has to be scientifically studied, but not uh, uh, presented in a, you know, a, a unilateral propaganda um, uh, way as it is often uh, often done that the uh, bad Soviet uh, arrested massively without any uh, objective reason because they were bad people. Um, of course, sometimes they did like that, sometimes not. And what was the reaction of the international communist movement in the September 39? They, they supported, supported, of course, the Soviet decision, but they didn't took, you know, it was not really uh, difficult for them because you had no, no communist party of Poland at that time. So they had not to take into account the opinion of Polish communists since they were unorganized. Um, uh, actually, they began to organize themselves step by step after the German occupation, under the German occupation, up to the reconstruction uh, re of the Polish Workers' Party in 1942. But uh, 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 in 1939, 1940, the communists were just creating in Poland bases for new organizations. Uh, they had no real organization, so the Comintern had not to take into account uh, a party which was not existing. So he, he, the Comintern just supported um, Soviet uh, policy and uh, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact as a tactical uh, agreement uh, to break the isolation of Soviet Union from um, all, all, all uh, imperialist powers. Of course, we can discuss about that if the decision was good or bad, uh, intelligent or could have been better. But uh, we have, of, of, of course, to take into, uh, into uh, account that the situation was very complicated uh, and it was difficult to have a policy, uh, you know, a, a, a stronger Soviet Union could have led. But still, at the moment, Soviet Union was not so strong as... Uh, as um, uh, it was uh, uh, 20 years later. So uh, I have a lot of questions, mm -hmm. um, but maybe we'll do it. I have, uh, I have 15 minutes left. Yes, I have to I, leave. Okay, yes, yes. So, so we, can, uh, we can move it to ne next time, because mm -hmm. also I want to ask about similar situation in Baltic states, and the relation with Romania, and also about this uh, winter war with, with, with Finland. Finland. Yes. 
But uh, uh, my that's... last my last question uh, is uh, uh, today. You you think that we have to be ashamed about this uh, situation that in the same time Soviet Union and the Hitler. Uh, have uh, participated in, in in this situation or we have to be proud of that because uh, they make a, a positive reform for, uh, towards socialism. I wouldn't say to be proud or to be ashamed. I would say to be rational. Uh, rationally speaking, uh, the decision taken by Soviet Union managed to preserve the um, existence of Soviet Union uh, and prepared Soviet Union uh, to fight against Germany on a much better situation that it would have um, if the German would have uh, uh, been on the Polish-Soviet border uh, already in 1939. That's, that's one point. Strategically speaking, uh, it was a good decision. Uh, strategically speaking. Now, if we take on the human aspect of the thing, it's contradictory. It's, of course, contradictory. Basically, we can say that uh, working classes, uh, at least some of them, uh, did improve their situation at the Soviet time. For sure, uh, 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 upper classes uh, were in a very tragic situation. Uh, and in the middle, you had people who were not really happy with the new situation, but who were not really happy with the former situation. Um, but I think that, historically speaking, uh, what the Soviet did in 1939 was logical. I, I would say it was impossible to imagine something else. It was, um, uh, it was um, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was the consequences of the English and French policy, and of course Polish policy. Uh, so it was logical. The, the decision of the of the of the, uh, this decision was uh, was uh, was. Uh, I give. I will give you an example. The, the uh, 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 right-wing opposition in Poland, anti-communist, the so-called National Party, in January, in January thirty-nine, um, in the leading uh, news, in their leading newspaper, there was a, a, an, an, an article uh, written by um, a, a professor, which was linked with their party announcing that if Josef Beck doesn't change his stupid policy, Soviet Union will not have any other choice than to make pact with Germany. Uh, and Poland will be a failed state because of its own leadership. And if Stalin sign a pact with Germany, Stalin will be right. And I mean, it's extreme right. It's not a communist. It's even not a leftist newspaper. It's the extreme right uh, a, a newspaper which, which was uh, 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 um, 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 writing that. And when the moment of Ribbentrop Pact was signed, the, 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 the right-wing Polish press uh, um, uh, wrote article telling Stalin was right. He had no other choice. I mean, and they were not communists. They were right-wing. So, uh, you know, you have to take that into account. Of course, the socialist press of Poland was was the same, in the same opinion, um, the opposition, the uh, P Polish Socialist Party. The Communist Party didn't exist at that time anymore. So if we, if we look at what Robotnik, the, the Polish Socialist Party uh, uh, wrote at that time, they, 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 they considered that Beck, uh, the, the Polish foreign minister, was responsible of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Not Stalin, not Mowotov, but Beck. Um, uh, uh, so we have to take that into account. I mean, uh, rationally uh, uh, thinking Poles at the time uh, uh, had this opinion, even within the government. Because if you look, uh, I told you about the General Langner in Lvov. 
uh, within the army. But we, we, we can talk about um, Starzynski, the mayor of Warsaw, Grazinski, the voivode of Silesia. Um, uh, 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 these people uh, 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 were in favor of a cooperation with Soviet Union against Nazi Germany, and they were strongly attacking their own government. Uh, because of uh, 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 of their policies in Czechoslovakia in 1938 and uh, um, uh, their refusal to make any move toward Moscow. So, I mean, uh, don't be a Catholic more than the Pope, as we say in Polish. Uh, if uh, a lot of Poles at that time understood Stalin had no choice, why would we would we would have to be more more anti-Stalinist than the anti-Stalinist of that time, who were uh, uh, understanding um, what we can call the you know the the the, the rationality of of uh, of geo strategy? Um, that's that's one thing. The second thing. Uh, Eastern Poland, as I told you, not only for national question, but also for economical and social question, was so backward. It was a really, I, we would say now, a third world country. Uh, this region was so backward. So whatever we think, how the Soviet reforms were introduced there, and we can criticize them for this or for that. But anyway, they pushed quite a lot of people from the lowest uh, uh, social classes up. Uh, they, they, they managed to organize an education system within one year. I mean, in these territories, you had 30% of, uh, of analphabets. Uh, in 1939, um, and Soviet Union managed in one year to organize schools everywhere. Uh, whatever we think about the system, I mean, they they put they promoted uh, lower classes. Of course, these lower classes were uneducated, and we ha we can we have to take into account that the new Soviet functionaries. Uh, the NKVD, the party, the state functionaries were uneducated most of the time. And when you are uneducated, you make sometimes a very wrong decision because you don't understand things. But it's, it, I mean, uh, Soviet Union couldn't uh, uh, promote a policy with Martians. They had to do with really existing people. And the real existing people were um, uh, uneducated. So uneducated people make sometimes wrong decisions because they are uneducated. But who is responsible for the fact that peasants of Ukraine, of Russia, on Belarusia, um, uh, uh, including Polish ones, were uneducated? It's not Soviet Union which is responsible for that. Uh, and Soviet Union had to manage with these people. Uh, because they couldn't find Martians to help them to build a, an ideal communism in one year. <laughs> if I... <laughs> okay, so thank you, Bruno. Uh, I, 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 I hope that uh, our conversation will be heard in Poland by all these uh, anti-communist liars. Uh, who all the time they, they make propaganda and uh, but they don't want to understand the real situation they are blocked they are in mental ghetto uh, <laughs> uh, so they, uh, i can say that for, for example i have never heard from this uh, anti-communist propaganda uh, uh, any words about this uh, general langner uh, yeah, that, that, uh, and why he was uh, one of the top generals of the Polish army. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, so. But uh, you can find him on, on the Wikipedia. I mean, yes, yes. I, I already found, uh, and uh, I, I make this. Uh, I copy link here to to everybody. And it's very important because uh, I would say something very important. I mean, um, if uh, Langner Langner didn't die in Katyn. Whatever we think about Katyn, and it's another uh, another question. He was freed before the 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 the, the uh, and why he was freed 
It means that it was possible to be even a general of the Pol Polish army and to be freed um, if you had a political, uh, 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 rational way of looking at things. Um, and, and it's important. I mean, the, the, the Polish officers who were not liberated were not liberated because they were fanatically anti-Soviet. And then we have to ask the question if they were killed by the Soviets or the Germans. But that's an order thing. But we have first to, to, to understand they were not liberated. But they were not liberated because they were an enemy of Soviet Union. Langner was liberated because he was not an enemy of Soviet Union. That's all. That's all. And Langner was a general. He was not, you yes, know. But why, un why Anders was liberated? He was yeah, of course it. later, later. Langner was liberated in nineteen uh, at the beginning. No, no, no. Of but why? Why they liberated Anders? Anders was. Ah, fanatic. that's the question. <laughs> that that that's the very big question. That's the question we'll never ask. We always ask about the ones who were not liberated, and it was an error of Soviet Union and so on. But we we never ask why they liberated Anders, and maybe it was an error to liberate him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he should have been uh, po uh, 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 he should have stayed in in in, 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 in prison because he, he created quite a lot of problems for the uh, for the Polish nation because all his strategy um, uh, was anti-Polish objectively. Because uh, if all the Poles would have fought on side uh, of the uh, uh, Soviet army and not in North Africa, maybe Poland would have been liberated a little bit earlier, even if it only one week earlier. At least in one week, uh, German would ha wouldn't have killed uh, people during that week. So we have to ask, if it was a good idea to liberate Anders. <laughs> but I will, who will ask I... that? <laughs> okay, thank you, Bruno. I will finish this. Good.